C-section is uh, the operative delivery of the fetus wherein we, under anesthesia, open, cut open the abdomen of the patient and uh, deliver the baby out. The reasons why we might have to do a C-section on a patient might be different. You know, there are various reasons why we might have to opt for C-section. Uh, there can be uh, recurring indications or non-recurring indications. Uh, uh, sometimes, you know, when there is a cephalopelvic disproportion, when the baby is too large for the mother's uh, passage, suppose if she is a short female and the baby's expected weight is somewhere around uh, 3 kgs or more, you know, the baby might not deliver vaginally. In that case, we might have to take her up for cesarean. Or if it's a failed induction or failed progress of labor, non-progress of labor, in those cases, we might have to take the patient up for cesarean. Or if she has some medical uh, disorders wherein she cannot, you know, bear the pains or we cannot let her to allow uh, to go for vaginal delivery, we will have to take her up for cesarean. Or when the baby's heartbeat, baby's uh, general condition is not doing fine, if there is any distress stress in the baby we will have to go for cesarean section and uh, and also uh, reasons when she cannot we cannot allow her for vaginal delivery like a complete placenta previa wherein the placenta is lying in the mouth of the uterus and we cannot allow her vaginal delivery because she will have bleeding C section is uh, when we uh, do a C section for a non reassuring fetal heart, when the baby's heartbeat is dropping, or when she's not progressing the way we are expecting her to progress, or if it's a failed induction, we have tried all gels and drips. If the baby passes meconium, which is the motion while uh, delivering, that is the reason we will, we might have to take her up for C-section or uh, for her to go into labor, but she's not gone into labor and she's, you know, post-dated pregnancy. These are the reasons normally why we take her up for an emergency C-section. And uh, we normally plan C-section, if at all, you know, normally the baby's head is down, but if the baby's buttocks are down, which is called breach, or if the baby is lying in a transverse lie, you know, she cannot be allowed for a normal delivery. In those, re in those cases, we plan her uh, and post her up for an elective C-section. Elective C-sections are definitely, you know, they are better than an emergency C-section because everything is planned. The pediatrician is available on time. The OT is ready. The anesthetist is ready, you know. And uh, there is an emergency C-section. We can land up an emergency any time in the night when suppose if the pediatrician is not there on time and the thing is not there. So always an elective C-section is better than an emergency C-section. These days, actually, we are seeing many patients who are opting for C-section because they don't want to experience the pain and uh, uh, distress that people undergo during labor because, you know, it can last anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. So these days, we see patients who come and ask that, you know, uh, we just want an elective C-section. Yeah, the C-section lasts about 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah, see, normally we prefer uh, spinal anesthesia. So she's anesthetized from the waist down. She feels her legs are numb and she will not be able to move her limbs. During the surgery also, she'll feel something is going on down, but she'll not feel the pain or she'll not know what exactly is happening. So we make a very small incision, you know, and uh, we close. When we close, we close it with subcuticular stitches. So it's almost just like a hairline. And if at all she does not face any infection post-surgery and things, she'll hardly see that scar. The child normally does not have any complications uh, during a C-section if it's performed well when compared to a vaginal birth. For more information on pregnancy, watch MDEL.